By the year 2036, an alien race called the Vuv has taken over Earth. Their presence has caused unemployment and homelessness in human society, while the aliens live in fancy cities that float above the planet. But they always sell the idea that they are here to help the human race progress. Adam is an aspiring artist living with his lawyer mother Beth and sister Natalie. Their father used to live with them too, but he left many years ago, although at least he left them the house, which is a privilege in this area because most people don't have where to live. However, Beth is currently unemployed, so lately it hasn't been easy for them. In his paintings, Adam records all the important moments of his life. On the other hand, Natalie has been trying to grow some real food in their garden because all they get is the artificial stuff sent by the aliens. One morning, an alien floating city appears over their house. They call it annoying, but it's obvious that it's a part of their daily life. Later in school, Adam attends the final class of English literature, where they're made to watch a presentation from the aliens full of propaganda using a device that connects to their minds. In this presentation, the aliens use cute drawings to lie about how much they've helped Earth. Afterward, their teacher announces he's been forced to retire because the aliens want humans to learn their vuv culture and history instead, and it'll be done through the devices. That way, the school doesn't waste money on teachers. Later, during their art class, Adam notices a new student named Chloe and starts talking to her to the point he develops a crush. He learns that her family doesn't have a house and she's tired of having to move every day. After class is over, Chloe and Adam are on their way out when they hear a shot. It turns out their literature teacher self-deleted. Adam is shaken by the harsh reality of the situation and invites Chloe and her family to come stay at his house. Later at dinner, the mood is tense. Chloe's father, Mr. Marsh, thanks Beth for dinner and promises to pay rent when he gets a job. But her brother Hunter is not grateful. Instead, he complains about not getting any real food. Suddenly, Adam blurts out that Chloe's family can stay in their basement as long as they want without asking Beth for permission, who thought they would only be here for a night. Beth takes Adam to the kitchen to scold him in private, but Adam convinces her it's the right thing to do. During the weekend, Chloe shows Adam how she usually goes drop hunting. This means she checks the things the aliens throw from the floating cities to find stuff to sell. As they talk about the horrible situation, Adam opens up about his father, a real estate developer who got an offer to create human housing for the aliens. However, he refused it on account of the aliens' unfair terms and ended up going to California, hoping to make a decent living. But he hasn't contacted the family again since then. While they chat, Adam starts drawing her portrait, and afterward they have some fun playing around with the drops. Sometime later at home, Adam shows Chloe the finished portrait, and the two are about to kiss when Mr. Marsh interrupts them. He makes sure to keep the curtains open, so the teens can't do anything naughty behind his back. Later in school, Chloe tries to sell some of the stuff she salvaged so that her family can pay rent to Beth, but nobody has money to spend on things that aren't necessities. Adam likes her so much that he is ready to forgive the rent. But Chloe has an idea to earn some money. Because their alien overlords procreate only as their function without any feelings, they consider human romantic love as something peculiar. There's a thing where couples can use their head devices to broadcast their lives to the aliens and get paid for it. Chloe asks if Adam would like to partner up with her. But he dislikes the idea, saying he finds the concept of someone peeking into their love life uncomfortable and he would prefer it to develop more naturally. But when Chloe explains they'll still behave naturally, she manages to convince him. From then on, Adam and Chloe start developing their romantic relationship while broadcasting it to the aliens. The devices record everything but also keep track of their vitals because the aliens like to see how love makes their palms sweat and their hearts beat faster. Their first date goes well, although Adam is a bit bothered that Chloe makes him move so that no sad people appear in the background. They have lots of sweet moments together, which can get kind of awkward because the device keeps telling them how many viewers they have and how much money they're making. They don't have many viewers at first, but as their relationship progresses, their views begin to grow as well. Soon they're having actual food at the table and their parents are proud of them, but Hunter is still skeptical. When Chloe tries to force a conversation about love, family, and relationships, Beth tells her not to bring business to the table. After dinner, Adam tries to have a sweet moment with Chloe without the devices, but she's very stubborn about them. The next day, 
Mr. Mirage is at home trying to learn the alien language, which is based on sounds humans can't really make. Hunter doesn't approve of this, because he feels like his father is selling out. At that moment, Beth arrives, and notices that Hunter and Mr. Marsh are using her computer without having asked her for permission, so she scolds them both as she talks about respect and boundaries. Hunter storms away, and while Mr. Marsh admits he should have asked for permission, he wishes Beth hadn't humiliated him in front of his son. Soon the discussion escalates into a shouting argument that the teens join when they get home. Suddenly Beth snaps and decides that from now on, they need to establish some house rules. After that, both families start having dinner separately. Hunter keeps complaining, saying that Adam's family comes from good money and should be more helpful, so Chloe calls him out for not being more grateful. As days pass, Adam gets more and more uncomfortable because every sweet moment of theirs is interrupted by the voice in the device sharing their stats. During a school party, she yells at another reality couple for appearing on their camera and refuses to talk about what's happening at home because it's too sad for the broadcast, so nothing is natural like she promised. Adam finally snaps and takes off the device, but Chloe points out this isn't the right time and they finish their dance. The next day at school, Chloe and Adam receive a letter from the aliens. They ask a classmate to translate it and are shocked to discover they're being sued by the broadcasting company. To discuss the subject, they get to visit one of the floating cities by taking a sky bus. There's a golf cart waiting for them, and they're surprised to see they'll be driven around by a human. It turns out this was one of the successful professionals like Adam's dad that were chosen to work for the aliens up here. But now he isn't a doctor. Instead, he's a driver. Apparently, the aliens like having educated people serving them as if they were curiosities. Adam thinks this is pretty sad. But the driver points out he's making much more money here than he did as a doctor, and he has children to feed. Eventually, they're left in front of a hole in the ground and the couple enters it to arrive at the alien office. The creature talks by rubbing its tentacles and a computer does the translation. It accuses the teens of deceiving the viewers, claiming their studies show they aren't in love anymore, and it doesn't believe them when they swear they are. The broadcasting company can sue them for a huge amount that would take six generations for them to pay back. However, since Chloe is desperate not to live on the streets again, she offers an alternate solution. They can start broadcasting with another partner. This breaks Adam's heart, but the alien is quick to accept. On their way back, Adam demands an explanation, and Chloe points out shelter is more important than dating. She also says it'll be better if they don't let business affect their friendship. Later at home, Beth checks the contract and admits there's nothing to do because the rules are clear and the alien lawyers are too powerful to confront them in court. Over dinner, Natalie starts getting pessimistic about their future, which leaves Beth very worried, so she goes to visit the alien office too. While waiting, she meets the boss's offspring, who accepts to shake her hand with its tentacle. Then during the meeting, Beth explains there are different forms of love, and that the most powerful love is actually the one a mother has for a child. She points out the alien boss has a child too, so it must understand the feeling at least a little. Then, she makes a new offer. When Beth returns home, Natalie and Adam are shocked to learn that their mom has come back with the alien boss's offspring, and they'll be paid for being its family. Beth and the alien have a peaceful wedding, although Adam is worried about his mother, and annoyed by the fact Chloe is with another guy, still broadcasting. Over dinner, Beth has to cut the food for her husband, and the family wonders what to call it. Since these aliens don't have concept of names, this one has to be called Father, which the teens don't like very much. Since their breakup, Adam has been ignoring Chloe, so she tries to talk to him at school, but he doesn't want to hear her out. When he arrives home, the alien calls him Son and asks for a hug, but Adam refuses and is very rude to it. Beth scolds him, and an argument ensues, so Adam decides to go to the basement to watch TV with Marsh and Hunter. On the news, they see two people arguing about the impact of Vuv on economics, and one of the hosts is obviously being paid to sell it better than it is. Hunter complains about the situation, but Marsh praises the competitive nature of the economy, and Adam points out how extreme competition can lead to domination. That statement makes Hunter laugh, and he makes some very bigoted comments about Adam, who he considers rich. This triggers another argument. Hunter ends up leaving in a huff. And while Marsh at first apologizes, then he comments that Adam's family is doing actually pretty well. So Hunter wasn't completely wrong. Later in the middle of the night, 
Adam hears some noises and comes down to discover that his father, Mr. Campbell, has sneaked inside the house. It's a bit awkward at first, but soon Adam becomes happy to see his dad again and asks what happened. Campbell explains that he's been waiting to actually have something to show his family. That's why he hasn't called. He also asks if Beth has moved on, but thinking about having to explain what's happening makes Adam too anxious, and he runs to hide in the bathroom. Campbell uses the chance to go check on Beth and discovers the alien is sleeping on top of her. Unable to deal with such a sight, he leaves the building, and by the time Adam comes out of the bathroom, his father is gone again. Sometime later, the teens go to school, only to discover it's been closed because the aliens have decided to provide education directly to the devices while the students are home. However, Adam stays a little longer to look at a building that signifies another loss for society. When he notices that they've covered all windows and doors, he decides to use this huge wall area as a giant canvas. Meanwhile, Beth spends most of her time watching TV with the alien, who likes old shows and movies, and won't let Beth change the channel or leave its side. Suddenly, the mail comes, and Beth discovers that the alien has ordered an apron and a blonde wig for her. At that moment, she gets a call from a workplace where she left her resume before all this started, and she's happy to discover she has an interview right now. When she announces she's leaving, the alien tries to make her stay, explaining it wants her to be a conventional wife that takes care of the house while the husband provides. Beth finally snaps, and after doing lots of yelling, that includes pointing out the one providing is actually the alien's dad, Beth leaves for her interview after turning off the TV. All this is overhead by Marsh, and when the alien fails to use the remote control, Marsh cuts in and offers his help. In the evening, Beth and her kids come home and are ready to celebrate because Beth got the job. However, they're shocked to discover that Marsh has put on the wig and the apron, explaining he's been taken over the alien's deal and now his family is playing the part. For the next few days, Adam continues to work on his mural, ignoring the weather and sometimes getting help from Natalie. Chloe sometimes watches him without revealing her presence. But she's also very frustrated about the alien situation with her dad. When Adam's finally done, the mural shows what a horrible time people are having with the overlords. Suddenly Adam trips and discovers the alien is here. Apparently it's gone out to explore the world and has discovered it's nothing like they show on TV. It notices the mural and asks about its purpose. But Adam doesn't know what to answer. The next day, Adam is called to the school, where lots of people are gathering. It turns out the alien has brought its dad and a human art expert to look at the mural. So Adam finally puts his words together to explain he painted this to show the state of the world, dedicating it to the spirit of human resilience. The aliens are impressed and offer him a huge opportunity to be an artist in one of the floating cities with a huge salary that leaves Adam speechless while everyone claps for him. After Beth checks the new contract, Adam decides to accept the deal. Natalie isn't happy to see him go, and when Adam explains it's only for a few months, Natalie points out that's what their father said. When it's time to leave, Adam says goodbye to his family. But before he can say goodbye to Chloe too, a small spaceship lands in front of the house to take Adam away to a huge spacecraft in outer space. Moments later, Adam is going through a very dark tunnel until he comes out in a big auditorium filled with aliens. To his disgust, the mural has been taken from the school and modified to make it look like the humans are happy to have the aliens around. Then he's asked to come to the stage, but they only want him to spread propaganda about how good the alien overlords are. Finally understanding his father and refusing to give up his morals, Adam cancels the contract and returns to Earth. Adam's family doesn't blame him for quitting, yet Adam still can't sleep. He decides to go to the school, and after noticing the damage caused by the aliens, he starts working on a new mural that matches his beliefs. Chloe finds him, and after they both apologize, Adam invites her to help him paint, a sign that they can slowly work on their relationship. The name of this painting is Landscape with Invisible Hand.